I'm asking this because I have another friend who was told that you cannot take more than two years of what you've contributed so far. The maximum you can get as a lump sum is two years contribution or something like that. I don't know the details. Yeah, I think actually the details with that is that if you wanted to opt out, you, you needed to opt out before you have contributed for two years. At this moment, it looks like you are coming back. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming back. I think if you are working, the place to be is the US. Stop that. <laughs> So I'm sure many of you have seen this face somewhere on YouTube, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Especially if you watch nursing content, UK, USA content, I'm sure you've definitely seen this face, Manny, or Manasetete, as he is known on YouTube. I'll leave a screenshot of his channel so that if you haven't, you know, explored his channel, you can't. I have been wanting Manny on my channel for how many years now, but <laughs> work out. But finally, he is here. So today, I am very interested in knowing about what happens to our pension in the UK if we decide to leave to, let's say, Australia, Canada, US, wherever. I'm asking this because Manny, for most of you who watch him, you already know that he was in the UK as a nurse. He practiced in the UK NHS for a while and he left the USA. Now he's making a lot of money in the USA. How long were you in the UK for, first of all? Oh, I was, I was in the UK for nearly two years. I, I was like a month short of two years. So let's say two years, right? Yes. If we round it up. And then how long have you been in the US so far? Oh, this is my 13th month in the US. Okay, so just a little over a year. Yeah. Okay. What happened to your NHS pension, all the money that you put in your pension, all the money that your employer may contribute towards your pension. What happened to it? Yeah, so with the NHS pension, I think it's available to you once you retire. And I'll just say thank you to your viewers and those watching us now. But with the NHS pensions, it's the money that's available to you once you retire. And so if you have plans of, of retiring in the UK, then absolutely you must be on the NHS pension because a lot of people have told me it's one of the best pension schemes in the country. But for myself, I did not have plans of retiring in the UK or in the NHS. So when it was time for me to move to the US, I just opted out of the pension and I took the lump sum I had, that I had contributed so far and whatever interest had accrued onto it. And then I moved out of the country. Okay, interesting. I'm asking this because I have another friend who was told that you cannot take more than two years of what you've contributed so far. The maximum you can get as a lump sum is two years contribution or something like that. I don't know the details. Yeah, I think actually the details with that is that if you wanted to opt out, you, you needed to opt out before you have contributed for two years. Mm -hmm. So if you contribute for more than two years, you're not allowed to opt out. So for most people who contribute more than two years, they are not allowed to opt out. And I don't know the veracity of that, but that was what I was told. So I made sure that I opted out before two years. And even if you opt out before two years and you change your mind, you can always go back onto the pension scheme. So you worked in the UK for two years and yeah. then just around the time that you were getting ready to move to the US, you opted out. So you were getting your full pay without paying anything towards your pension in the UK. Yes. And then you just around the time that you were planning to go you decided to request for your contribution so far. Yes. So when exactly did you opt out and how many months did you contribute and how much did you get for those many months? The lump sum Oh, well, I contributed for like, I think for the entirety of my period of working there. So nearly two years like, with, like I said earlier. And then for the lump sum or for the process, I just had to send fill out a form with my HR okay. and once they sent me that form and I filled it out, I think it took a month and then I got my pensions the next month. I think it was well over two thousand pounds or so. Is yeah. it either with the interest or without Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean before the money comes, interest is taken out. So what you get in your bank is what is yours, right? So that's that's what I had. I think yeah, it was about two thousand pounds thereabout. But the important thing was that tax was taken out and I contributed for just about two years. Okay. Yeah. I see. So what advice would you give to people who have been here five years and are still in the process of coming to the US or going elsewhere do you think they should opt out is it a safe thing to do? <laughs> well that's interesting i know because i think that people have their plans and i'll say that then nhs pensions is like any investment that you are going to start so something like if you're in the us you have the 401k or you can even open a roth independent retirement account or roth ira you are going to leave that money until you're 60 and then you're going to take that money out if you take it out before 60 they're going to be like penalties that you pay so if you are somebody who is thinking of having diversified portfolio of investments in your retirement, I think it's a good step to keep your investments in the NHS. I mean, it's money that you are doing without anyway. You don't need to survive on that money. And so once you are 
having that investment done, you've made the investments for let's say three, four, five years, six years, and you're about to leave the UK. You can leave that in the UK. Some people after five years already have property in the UK and there is no need to like sell it before you move to the US. You can always have it as a second home or as a second investment. And then once you live for some time, it appreciates and you're able to recoup heavily so that you can use it to fund whichever investments you want to do in the US. I mean, if mine had been about two or three years or even five years and I was going to pay penalty before opting out, there was no way I would have done it because that's money lost. But if once, as long as I have a pension scheme here, then there's no need to keep leaving my pension scheme in the, in the UK because I can tell that it is secured and safe. And like most people in Ghana who had pensions, I mean, some of them still left their pensions with data bank or whichever snits and all of that and they move. Even with all the insecurities or instability with the financial sector in Ghana, people still believe that it is a stable place to leave your pensions. So it's the same as the UK. If you've done five years instead of opting out and paying penalties, I would gladly go ahead and leave my investments there and move to the US and start all over again because it's not money that I'm ever going to lose. I can always come back to that fund. Wow. And now that you have also experienced contributing towards your pension in the US, is there a big difference with, you know, pension contributing in the UK versus the US? I know that <laughs> people have the... <laughs> 401k mm -hmm. and then you have the Roth. Yeah. Is the Roth different from Roth IRA or is it the same? Oh, it's the Roth IRA. And which one is the matching? The four yeah, the four one k So I think they, they just give them all those names to just complicate the whole thing, but it's quite simple and straightforward. So when you have a job, your mm -hmm. employer is obliged to match a contribution into your pensions, which is called a 401k. Okay. Now, I mean, there are several types. There are 401k, 402, 403b and all of that. But a basic pension you get for tax is what is called a 401k and mm -hmm. if you are somebody who is making their contribution into your 401k your employer is required by law to match it to a certain percentage maybe five percent of your 401k contribution will be matched so let's say if you can be 500 dollars a month your employer may be obliged to pay let's say 50 dollars a month which is like 10 percent in addition to whatever you are contributing and that's what is called matching they are matching your contribution to a certain percentage so i decide how much i want to contribute towards my pension and then my employer would match up so yes. before you start working they'll ask me that question or what yes some of them will ask you before you start working, some of them will ask you along the line. What I notice is that a lot of the agencies that bring international nurses do not talk about it. So you have to read about it and find out because it's additional cost to the company, even though they can't. So now that they are not it. talking about it, which one do they automatically put you under? If you are not talking about it and you don't do your 401k, you are not getting any pension plan. You are just going to have what the government will be deducting from your Medicare and your Medicaid so that when you retire, you can, you can get healthcare and all of that. But if you want to like have a retirement account, because I know some people who are with my agency, but they don't have a 401k. So they don't have the benefits of having an investment account. And it's quite useful because if you have a 401k and the year ends and you're going to write all your taxes, the tax savings are made based on your 401k. So you can have 401k savings and it's going to save you about say $5,000 because you have a 401k. I hear that with a 401k, when you are 59 and a half or 60 years and you are going to assess it, they will now tax it again. Yes, because it's money that you pay before tax. So that's the difference between the 401k and the Roth IRA. The Roth IRA is Roth Independent Retirement Account. And the Roth is the name of the person who started it. So what happens is that with after your salary is paid to you and the money comes into your bank account, which is your after-tax money, you are taking that money to put in an investment account and it's called a Roth IRA. And so it's a privileged account where you invest about $6,000 there about a year. That's the maximum. If your income is below a certain uh, threshold, I think that's about $200,000. So what happens is that with the Roth IRA, you invest that money after tax. And so you are not taxed once the money matures. But the 401k, you invest the money before tax. And so if you are going to take it out in your retirement, it's going to be taxed. Interesting. So knowing this, comparing the pension scheme in the UK <laughs> and in the US, which one do you think you'd have more to spend when you're at home on retirement? If you are talking about quantum wise, definitely the US will mention Big a huge amount of money. But definitely they are going to have huge deductions as well so you are going to end up around the same amount but what i realized is that there is that social security in the uk a lot more than in the us what do you mean by social so, security so like i mean the healthcare system that supports you in the uk the state support that you get i mean that's why you have very few homeless people in the uk as compared Honestly. to the US because the social basket is much more accommodating of people who are at the lower end of the social spectrum as compared to people in the us so i think that's what the truth is at this moment it looks like you're coming back no no I'm, I'm i'm not coming back i think if you are working the place to be is the us because 
you, you can actually work and make your money and you can start businesses i mean i just came over here but i can start a business if i want to i couldn't have done that in the uk there were so many challenges or bottlenecks that you cannot do because you are a tier two visa holder but if you're a green card holder you can start a business i mean i know a friend who opened a nursing home and he's just a green card holder he's been wow. there for about two years and he opened a nursing home so wow yeah so when That's his contract cool. ended with whichever agency he didn't go to get a job again he started working in, in his own nursing home but it's not something you can even think of doing in the uk because you don't how have, dare you yeah so if you are somebody who's working and you are in your working class age i mean the sheer latitude of the advantages you have in the u.s as a green card holder you can leverage that to sort of be a business person and make loads of money wow well said i don't want us to drag this topic too much so you've explained that the norm in the uk is that you can opt out and take your money that's your pension contribution if you contributed uh, two years or less however yeah. after two years you may not be able to take everything but you're advising people who have stayed much longer that in a way, instead of paying, let's say, a penalty or whatever, they should just leave it in to let it mature. Let it be like a backup investment, yes, that they can access anytime in their lives when they are due to, to access. And then you explain the US, the types of pension contributions that you have. Mm. And one thing that I learned is that for those that are going with agencies, they should bring this conversation up. They should ask the agencies about their pension contribution. Because like you said, some agencies don't even talk about this with the nurses they are recruiting. So mm. the nurses should be aware all their options the 401k the matching the Roth IRA and yeah. then do you listen to Dave Ramsey oh yeah yeah I do listen to Dave Ramsey a lot yeah I, I even wanted to take one of his financial coaching courses but I, wow. I, I put a plug on it but. Dave Ramsey I don't know so I don't want to say too much and make an, a mistake but he was like he would always advise people to, to contribute to, towards their Roth IRA first 10% of then day in total he was like making 15% he has like a step by step in terms of pension alone yeah. on how to go about it I didn't know if yeah, you it's, it's, uh, it's called baby steps so not, not, not the baby steps as in your emergency funds oh, oh, oh you mean his investment for retirement for retirement he has yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i read that thing but i don't have it off head but i know that he recommends a roth ira and a 401k instead of a traditional you know there's a roth ira and there's a traditional roth so he recommends roth ira instead of a traditional roth because some banks or some investment companies will, will just start you on traditional roth instead of a roth ira and i know that there are some benefits and some downsides of that so yeah. he has those recommendations that he made but I mean, I leave a short clip of it in the video for those who want to know those who don't know dave ramsey he's a millionaire um yeah. he has so much knowledge on finance and he's a financial uh, coach, yeah. yes he's a financial coach and he has a very popular show the dave ramsey show on youtube he has yeah. several financial books and he speaks with them i listen to him a lot so for those who are in um, in america and want to take his advice because some of them they don't apply to the uk so sometimes when i listen I so i'll leave that clip here for those who really want to okay in a traditional you have paid taxes on none of the money so you'll pay taxes on the entire seven 1.7 $7 million dollars taxes on that would probably be four hundred thousand bucks okay okay in an in a roth you will have already paid your taxes on the 200 that you put in because it's an after-tax investment and the growth the other 1.5 million is 100 percent tax-free so when you get to retirement, you're either going to pay taxes on $1.7 million or you're going to have $1.7 million tax-free. Just the same, the Roth is the way to go. Always do Roth. So your final words regarding this whole pension thing and then we'll call it done. Yeah, so I think that, for example, if you, you come to the US, you still want to invest in something that most people do, which is like they have an index fund. And so if you open an account with Vanguard, one of the index funds you can invest in, there are several mutual funds and, and index funds. Some of them is even investing in the G7 nations or an European nation stock or even a UK stock, government stock. So it gives you that the knowledge that the UK is a very safe place for people to invest their funds. In. And so if you have investments there, I'll tell you if it's taking like four or five years and it's beginning to mature, just let it run. I mean, when you come to the US, you have more than enough funds to invest if you want to work. <laughs> We hear you. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. So for those who want to get into contact with Manny or watch his videos, I'll leave a link to his channel and I'll leave a screenshot of it here so you can get access to him. Thank you so much. Bye.